Hey everybody, it's Dr. Angelcheck, board certified plastic surgeon from Glendale, Arizona, and I'm here today to talk to you about rhinoplasty surgery. Rhinoplasty is an operation that we do to change the shape of the nose. So when people come into the office for rhinoplasty surgery consultations, the first thing that we do is make a diagnosis. And the way that we do that is we'll talk to the patient about what concerns them, what, what is going on with the shape of the nose that they don't like. Sometimes it's that the bridge of the nose is too high, the tip is too wide, the tip is drooping, the nose is crooked, the bridge is too low. There's a lot of different um, things that people will mention based on what they see. And then we'll, we'll do an exam. We'll look at the nose, the shape of the nose, the relationship of the nose to the other parts of the face. And we'll look inside the nose to look at the lining, to look at the turbinates, which are bony scrolls that help to uh, warm, humidify, and filter the air before it goes in our lungs. We'll look at the septum to see if the septum is crooked or damaged in some fashion. And then we'll talk with the patient about uh, the mechanics of doing the procedure. So typically in my office, when we do a uh, rhinoplasty, I do what's called an open rhinoplasty. That means there's going to be an incision in the columella, which is this part of the nose here. And then the incision extends inside the nostrils in sort of a gull wing fashion. And that allows us to lift up the soft tissues off of the cartilage, which is the part that we can move here and the bone, which is this fixed part up here. And we can see everything that's going on in terms of what's creating that, the shape of the nose and what the problems are. And it's like lifting up the hood of a car to work on the engine. Uh, you can see everything uh, and you can make adjustments and then redrape the soft tissues and see how it looks. If you don't like it, you can adjust it. It gives you a lot of control in the operating room to get to the desired endpoint. Um, the operation is uh, done at a surgery center. It's done under general anesthesia. You have a board certified anesthesiologist. Depending on the operation, it could take anywhere from an hour and a half to four hours, depending on the extent of what we're, we're going to do. Uh, after surgery, patients have a splint um, on the outside to protect uh, the bones um, that oftentimes have been um, cut and moved to create the new shape. And they have splints on the inside of the nose as well, which are soft silicone rubber splints that have airways built into them so that they can breathe through their nose after surgery. We don't pack the nose with, with gauze after the procedure. And they'll have a little mustache dressing across the upper lip with some ointment on the incision that they'll go home with. The biggest things after uh, rhinoplasty surgery for patients um, as far as home care is keep your head up all the time, uh, especially during that first week. It'll help reduce swelling, it helps to reduce bruising, and it'll help reduce discomfort if you have less swelling. Additionally, um, ice packs uh, on the eyes. Um, frozen peas and baggies work great. There's some other uh, types of ice packs you can use as well. Doing that religiously for three or four days really helps reduce bruising and swelling. And so a lot of patients at the end of a week will have minimal bruising um, if they follow those instructions. Everybody's different. Some people have more swelling than others and more bruising than others. So the operation steps, after we've exposed everything, we're gonna expose the septum by um, separating the lower lateral cartilages, which are these cartilages here, and the upper lateral cartilages here from the midline. And if the nose uh, uh, bridge is too high, we're gonna reduce the cartilage and reduce the bone here to get it to the height that we want. If it's too low, it's a little bit of a different operation where we're going to build that bridge back up using cartilage um, uh, in patients that have a low bridge. But for the majority of patients, they'll have that bridge lowered. Once the bridge is lowered, we're going to um, harvest cartilage if we need it from the septum for grafts. Uh, and then we'll reapproximate the soft tissue covering over the septum with sutures inside. And when we do that, we're going to put these upper lateral cartilages back on the septum in the right position, oftentimes with what we call an auto spreader graft or an auto spreader flap, which will help with breathing postoperatively and also helps aesthetically to blend the lines on the bridge of the nose. We 
we want to have a graceful line coming down from the bony part of the nose to the tip um, that looks natural and, and harmonious and not pinched in the middle. And then we're going to address the tip cartilages, um, reducing the cartilages, moving the cartilages, stabilizing the cartilages, oftentimes with grafts, so that the tip is strong and it looks good. Uh, it's very important that we leave a stable construct behind after the procedure, which means that the cartilage is strong enough to resist the forces of healing. Because after rhinoplasty surgery, and this is a little bit hard to understand for people who haven't done this, is the soft tissues of the nose, including the skin envelope, are gonna push on that cartilage uh, for the rest of your life. And if that cartilage isn't strong, it can buckle and create strange appearances over time. So when we do the procedure, particularly in the tip cartilage area, we want to leave behind a very strong and stable construct that will not buckle. And we're going to do that by using sutures and cartilage grafts where necessary um, to create that construct. Once we've lowered the bridge, adjusted the tip, taken care of the septum, uh, which is cartilage and bone, to make sure that it's straight. Uh, then we need to move the bones so that the roof, the bridge of the nose is closed. The nose is kind of like an A-frame cabin. If you take off the top of the A-frame, you have what we call an open roof, and we don't want to leave it like that. It will look too wide for patients in the setting of a rhinoplasty. So there are different ways to move the bones and cut them. I do what are called perforating external osteotomies on most of my patients. That means I'm going to make a little two millimeter incision here and here. I use a tiny little chisel and I'm going to make little perforations inside on the bone and I'm going to push on that bone. It's going to crack along that line and move to the position that we want. What's the advantage of that? Uh, it's less traumatic. There's more soft tissue attachments that are left intact, and so the bones tend to be more stable and stay where we put them. The nasal bones are very delicate. They're like little potato chips, basically, for most patients. And once we've done the rhinoplasty, there's a lot of swelling, and that swelling can move uh, the bones around. So we want to position them and stabilize them uh, in the right position, and then we use our splints to help keep them where we want them. I'll also have patients do some exercises after surgery that help in the first few weeks after surgery to keep the bones in the right position. So after we've done all of that, uh, then we put your dressings on, excuse me, then we close your incisions in the nose. Any stitches on the inside of the nose dissolve and we don't have to take those out. The external stitches come out uh, usually six days to seven days after surgery in the office. The splints come off at that time as well. And then we're also going to then tape the bridge of the nose often because there's still going to be swelling and the skin wants to go back to where it used to live. So by taping, we're going to push that skin down onto the cartilage and the bone um, to avoid swelling that can cause scarring, that can distort the shape of the nose. And we'll do that for another week and then I'll have you tape it at night uh, and not do it during the day until we're happy that things are settling down into the right, right position. After surgery, typically patients are on antibiotics, pain medicine is needed, something for nausea, uh, a nasal salt spray that they can use to rinse the nose because we don't want you blowing your nose for the first couple of weeks. That uh, pressure can blow air into the incisions and that's not sanitary. Um, the first couple of weeks, patients have to keep their head up and avoid any strenuous activity and get their blood pressure up. The, the nose has a tremendous blood supply. We don't wanna do anything that increases the risk um, for bleeding. After two weeks, people can uh, resume most of their normal activities. For socializing and work, two weeks is usually about right for people. Very important to avoid any pressure on the bridge of the nose for about eight weeks, including glasses um, that could move the bones around while they're healing. The bones start to get sticky at about two weeks, but it really takes about six to eight weeks till they're really strong uh, and in the right position. So that means you want to avoid anything that could hit the nose or cause pressure on it. So sports that involve balls or co contact sports um, are things that you want to avoid. With open rhinoplasty, your nose uh, is going to be swollen for a year or more. And during that time, it's going to gradually get better. The good news is most of that swelling is going to be gone at about six weeks. 
And the rest of it, it's gonna be like watching the grass grow. It just takes a long time. But gradually, it will, it will go away. Sometimes we'll put a little injection of medication into the soft tissues to reduce swelling while you're healing in particular areas. The objective of the rhinoplasty is to make it look like you, that fits your face. It looks natural, it looks good, but it doesn't look obvious. That's a good rhinoplasty, and that's good plastic surgery in general. Typically, um, scars are not a problem with this operation. I've never had to do a scar revision for a thick, uh, ropey scar on a rhinoplasty. It just doesn't come up very often. Of course, it's everybody's different, but it's, it would be very, very rare. Um, once your nose um, has uh, healed, you'll find that um, the feeling will come back in the tip, which is gonna be numb for about six months, and also will feel very kind of woody and hard while it's still swollen, um, but that will resolve and it will feel normal again.